Turn with me this morning to Isaiah, the 46th chapter in the ninth verse. I'm not going to try to keep you no more than an hour and a half, maybe two hours at the longest this morning. If we look into the book of Isaiah, we see something this morning goes along with the song that I just got through singing. If I ask you this morning to attempt to raise your hand if you believe that God is still able to do the impossible, no doubt that every hand in here and every hand out there, if you know the Lord, you would raise your hand. Amen? Because you've been in situations where it seemed like, no, you knew it was impossible without God. Amen? So we would all raise our hand in that, yet sometimes in the midst of the battle, sometimes in the eye of the storm, sometimes in the midst of the trial or the fire, every now and then, Brother Jim, we may lose sight of that and need to be reminded that God is still on the throne, that prayer still changes things, that His arm is not short, that His eye is not dim, that His power is not weakened, that He is still God, and that He's still more than able to do exactly what we need Him to do. Amen. So sometimes we need to be remember, we need to be reminded because we forget. How many people forget things? Amen. I saw where somebody put on a Facebook. They said that there's two things that I've learned in life. The first one I forgot, and the second one is I need to start writing stuff down. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So all of us this morning probably struggle with remembering things. Isaiah 46 and 9 says, Remember the former things of old. God speaking, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Many times you'll find if you go looking through the book of Psalms where David would say the words, I will remember my God. I will remember the Lord. I will remember. Amen. We need to, as the Bible says, the Lord says here, remember the former things of old. Remember where He's brought you from. Remember what, remember what He's brought you through. Remember the times that you stood before a, 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 a wall that you saw no way around and no way over and God brought it down. Amen? Amen? Remember this morning that when you faced a situation that seemed dire and completely impossible that now you can stand here and look back and realize that God made a way where there seemed to be where there seemed to be no way. Amen. He's still the God of the impossible today. He's still more than able, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter how hopeless it looks, God is still more than able to move on your behalf, to open a way, to make a way in the wilderness. Amen. To bring forth water out of a rock when you need something to drink, to rain down manna from heaven above when you need something to eat. Amen. When you're up in the mountain and, and, and the family going on. He's able to supply you something to drink from the brook and to bring you some food from a buzzard's mouth. Amen. We're talking about the God of impossibilities. Amen. With man these things are impossible. But with God all things are possible this morning. Amen. He's still on the throne. He has not and He will not forsake His people. You might have tuned into Fox News this week or God forbid CNN or, or some of them other things, MSNBC, and you might have seen the dire situation that we are facing in our country. And by all accounts, it looks impossible. But well, we've still got a God today that says with man it may be impossible, but with God all things are possible this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. You may look at the church as a whole and it's backslidden and lost its way. It seems it's lost as a ball in a high wave and has no real knowledge of the Word of God. And you may think, well, it's hopeless. Well, I got news for you. It might be for man, but it's not impossible or hopeless with God. Hallelujah. He's still more than able. Amen. Amen. We need to remember this morning. We need to remember the former things. We we need to remember what he's done for us in our life and use those as a place to build faith and say, God, I know that you're able because you brought me through before. Lord, I know that you're able to bring me through this fire because this ain't the first time I've been in the fire. Lord, I know you're able to bring me through this trial because this ain't the first time I've been in a trial. Amen. Lord, I know you're able to take me through this valley because this ain't the first valley i ever been through. Amen. Hallelujah. He's more than able. 
He's more than able. Amen. Woo Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me to 2 Chronicles 32 and 8. 2 Chronicles 32 and 8. The Lord wants to remind us this morning that just when things look hopeless, our God delivers again. Amen. 2 Chronicles 32 and 8. Hezekiah, speaking of the enemy here that they are facing, listen to what he says about the enemy. The same can be said of your enemy today. With him, talking about his enemy, is an arm of flesh. But, oh, aren't you glad this morning for all the butts in the Bible? Hallelujah. Thank God for the butts. Sometimes the situation looks dire. Sometimes the situation looks, looks nigh on the impossible, as Granny would have said. Amen. But then it says, but with us is the Lord. And what it means is they got, they got a bigger army than we got. They got more artillery than we got. They look stronger than we do, Brother Jim. They look bigger than we do, Brother Jim. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Same can be said of us today. We said I wrote it down, but you know the scripture. That the Bible says that there are more with us than there are that are against us. Amen. Hallelujah. And that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now listen to what it says here. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, the king of Judah. There is rest to be found in his word today when we realize that the battle was won on Calvary's cross. Amen. There is rest to be found today that when we realize that all things are possible with God. There is rest to be found today when we realize that all things work together for good to them that love God and the called according to his purpose. There is rest to be found today when we realize that if God, oh, I said if God be for us, who can be a against us. The people rested in the words of King Hezekiah when he said that they have an arm of the flesh. Yes, they have, they have great men of valor. They have great warriors. They have chariots. They have horses. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah the king of Judah. There is rest for us to be found today. Going to do a lot of jumping around here. You might want to write them down. You can get there if you want to, but it might be gone before you arrive. Psalms 146 and 5, David said, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the political world, man, mm -mm. religion, no. himself. No, whose hope is in the Lord his God. There is a place to find hope this morning, but it's not in the White House in Washington, D.C., amen? There is a place to find hope this morning, but it's not in the hallowed halls of Congress this morning. There is, there is a place to find hope this morning, and it's not in the Catholic Church. It's not in the denomination. It's not in religion. There is hope to be found in our God who is still on the throne, who, hallelujah, whose arm is not short, whose eye is not dim, and just when things look hopeless, our God, God will deliver again. Hallelujah. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord his God. Look at Psalms 20 and 6. Psalms 20 and 6 and 7. David knew what it was like to be facing an impossible situation. What do you think it looked like whenever he went out there on the battlefield to face down Goliath? He was being laughed at, ridiculed by his brothers. Who do you think you are? Well, put down by the enemy for sure. Goliath said, huh, well, they send some kid to fight me with some stave. You're going to defeat me with that little slingshot? Amen. I'll feed you. I'll rip your carcass apart and feed your hide to the, to the birds. Amen. So David knew what it was like 
in the natural to see that it looked like an impossibility. But he knew what it was like to look through eyes of faith and see that all things are possible with God and to see that it, through the eyes of faith that enemy ain't so big after all. When you compare him to the size of your God. David said, Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with saving strength of his right hand. Glory to God. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But, oh, somebody say but. but. We will remember the name of the Lord. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in the strength of the army. And when David went down there, and I don't have this in my notes this morning, but we'll talk about him for a minute. When David went down there and the battle had been set array between the Philistines and the Israelites, the Philistines were bigger, they were tougher. They had, they had convinced Israel of that. They had beat, the, the giant had came out, I think, three times a day maybe and beat his chest and talked about how tough he was. And not one of the Israelites had the guts to stand up and say, oh yeah, you ain't seen our God. Oh yeah, you don't know our God. Amen. But except for one little old shepherd boy who took some bologna and cheese sandwiches down to his brother so they'd have something to eat. And he just happened to be, not just happened, but God made sure he was in earshot of hearing the Philistine come out and deny, defy the living God and the army of the living God. And he said, wait a minute, fellas. What is going on here? Why are you hiding in the foxhole and not facing this giant? You should know that your God is bigger than this giant. Church, you should know this morning that your God is bigger than any giant that you face, bigger than any mountain that you face. But he's, he's greater than any fire, greater than any trial that you face. And you know what happened? David went out and faced down the giant and said, you come to me with a spear and a sword. With other words, with the arm of the flesh. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. And guess what happened? Oh. God delivers again. Amen. Oh, just when things look hopeless, our God delivers again. Amen. Amen. You don't have to go there. But this goes along with what David was talking about. Isaiah 31 and 1. We see where David said some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. Well, if, if you look in Isaiah 31 and 1, Isaiah writes, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. In other words, woe is you if you look to the arm of the flesh for deliverance. Amen. Woe is you, woe is us today if we look for our deliverance in any other place than our God. Woe is us today if we look for salvation, God forbid, in any other place than the old rugged cross. Woe is us today if we look for victory in any other place today than the old blood-stained rugged cross of Calvary. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woe is those that would trust in horses and trust in chariots because they are many and because they are, because they are uh, very strong, but that they will not seek or they will not trust the Holy One of Israel and seek the Lord. Woe is us today if we're trusting in anything else. Amen. God wants us to remember that He's still on the throne, that prayer still changes things. That the one we're praying to still has the power to change things. Amen? Even though it may seem impossible, even though it may look impossible, God is the God of impossibilities. He is more than able this morning. Amen? He is more than able. Our hope is in the Lord. Jeremiah 17 and 7 says this, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Listen what it says. For he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of, by the he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of the drought 
neither shall cease from yielding fruit. That's Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. What's he saying? He's saying, blessed is the man who trusts, whose hope, whose faith is in the Lord. Because even during the time of drought, even during the time of famine, even during the time of hardship, because he is planted by the rivers of the water of life, Oh, that fountain that brings forth life because his faith is there, because he's rooted there, because that's where his hope is at. Hallelujah. I don't worry this morning about losing my salvation because my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Amen. I don't worry this morning about losing my justification or my sanctification because all of that is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness and what he did on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. So I don't worry about that. I used to be like what Brother Jim was talking about. Oh no, I've sinned. I'm lost. No. Amen. My faith is not in that I never mess up. Because I'm going to mess up. I heard Brother Swagger say this week, I'm not sure exactly all he was talking about, but he said this. He said, if you mess up, he said, no, when you mess up. Mm hmm because you are going to mess up. Amen? Amen? Aren't you glad this morning for the promise to God's people that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Aren't you glad this morning, even when we're not faithful, He's faithful. Aren't you glad? Oh, I can say that again this morning because the devil don't like it. Aren't you glad this morning that even when He, even whenever we are not faithful, He is always steadfast, faithful, and true. Amen, amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Look what it says. 1 Peter 3 and 15. And we was reading that there in Jeremiah, for he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers. I always want to put that in there because I think that's how it's worded in Psalms, the first chapter. Uh, and planted by the waters. I remember that old song we used to sing, I shall not be, I shall oh, yeah. not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. He'll be like a tree planted by the waters. Hallelujah. Where's those waters flow from? The same place every other blessing that we receive flows from. Hallelujah. The cross of Calvary. And when I talk about that, I'm not talking about that wooden cross, that wooden beam or that tree. I'm talking about the finished work of Christ when He said it is finished. Hallelujah. And the temple veil was rent in twain from top to bottom. And now we can walk boldly into the throne room of God through the blood of Jesus and say, here I am. And like Brother Jim was talking about just as I am this morning. Amen. That old song says just as I am without one plea. You know what that means? Just as I am Lord I can't plead my own righteousness. I can't plead my own holiness. All I can do is plead the blood of Jesus and throw myself on your mercy and say here I am Lord you know what I am. You know what I ain't. You know what I You know what I can offer. You know what I can't. Hallelujah. Here I am Lord I, I ask that you would wash me and cleanse me in the blood of Jesus. That's our only hope today. Amen. If you think your hope today is in your religion, you are badly mistaken. Your only hope today is in Jesus Christ that shed His blood on the cross of Calvary and putting your faith in Him. Where did I say go? 1 Peter 3.15 But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always, and you all hear me talk about this scripture a lot, be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness, meekness and fear. There is a hope that is in us today that does not come from the world or what the world has to offer. It comes from the fact that our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It comes from the fact that not only in our own lives we can look back and see times that He's delivered in times that looked hopeless and impossible, yet God made a way where there was no way that we can look into His Word. We don't have time to go to all of the Scriptures this morning, but I've got a few examples I want to share with you. You can go all the way back to Genesis, the first chapter, the second verse. The Bible says, and you probably know this by heart, the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. If you were able, which was an impo it was impossible, but if you would have been able 
to view the situation, you would have seen the chaos or the helplessness or the hopelessness that it looked here in the beginning whenever it said the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Oh, but just when things look hopeless, our God delivers again. What happens? It says there was darkness upon the face of the deep. The earth was without form and void. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. No matter the darkness that you're going through today, it may be so thick it feels like you can cut it with a knife. God is still on the throne. His Spirit can still move on your situation. He can still speak His Word into your life and say, let there be light. And when lightness comes, darkness has to flee. Amen? Amen. So that situation looked hopeless. But our God delivers again. Amen? When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and they did exactly that which God told them not to do. And they covered themselves in fig leaves and hid in the bushes when they heard Him coming. That situation looked hopeless. All of heaven may have looked on that and thought, well, it's over now. The Father ain't going to put up with this. Amen? He told them not to do it. They did it anyway. How many times have you been told not to do something but you did it anyway? That's really it, that that relates to all of us, <laughs> Amen. Yeah. In the natural and in the spiritual. Yeah. So God could have just wiped them out. If you were standing back somewhere amidst the trees, looking at it, you would have thought this is impossible. It looks hopeless. But the Bible says God made a sacrifice. Amen. Glory to God. A picture. It says He clothed them with coats of animal skins. Amen. Where did He get them from? From the animals that had to be slain. The blood that had to be shed. Which was a picture and a type of what happened on the cross of Calvary. As Jesus Christ walked this earth, the earth looked hopeless. Man looked hopeless. Amen. It looked like that there was no way. The darkness was too thick. It was just impossible. But God said, I'll send my son to die on an old rugged cross and as he hung between heaven and earth on the cross of Calvary with blood running hallelujah from his veins he said father forgive them for they know not what they do he said it is finished he gave up the ghost and the temple veil was written in twain and once again when things looked impossible God delivered again when it looked like there was no way God made a way one more time for mankind. Amen. It looked impossible, but not with God. How about what part of the song that we sung this morning? Standing there at the Red Sea. And you know how it goes. I can't go into all each and every one of these stories, but we'll hit the high points. God delivered his people up out of Egypt. They were headed toward the promised land. They're standing there. They come to the Red Sea, and it's too wide to cross, and it's too deep. It's too wide for them to swim and it's too deep for them to walk and what do they do well my was it we're better off in Egypt amen look who's coming behind you can see the dust that their chariots and their horses is making in the distance the Red Sea's in front of them a mountain on either side and Pharaoh is closing in for the kill amen what are we going to do this situation is impossible. If you'd have been there and you'd have been one of the Israelites, you would have thought, there ain't no way. This is it. We're finished now. If you'd have been one of the, the uh, Egyptians, you would have thought, <laughs> I got them now. I wonder how many times, Brother Jim, the devil thought, <laughs> I got him now, amen. He was licking his chops and closing in for the kill. But just when things looked hopeless, God hey. delivered again. Hallelujah. The Bible yeah. says Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of our God. Sometimes we just need to stand still and see God move and make a way. Or there is no way. I told you I was feeling Brother Hinton on this morning. Hallelujah. My, 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 the Bible says the Lord caused the east wind to blow all that night. I believe that's how I put it. And it parted the waters uh, by a strong east wind all that night. Didn't happen like it did in the movies. And made the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the people walked across. Amen. Just when things looked hopeless, 
God delivers again. Brother Billy, you believe that stuff? You better believe it. If the Bible says it, it happened. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, that's because it wasn't but about a foot of water. Because it was at a time when the Red Sea was down and they just walked across. Yeah, but if there was just a foot of water, that's even a greater miracle than he split in the Red Sea because that means he drowned Pharaoh and his army and his chariots in a foot of water. Hallelujah. My, my, my. He's God. Either way you want to chop it. Amen. Either way you want to rearrange it. It was a miracle. Hallelujah. That God did. Just when things looked hopeless, our God delivered again. Hallelujah. We could talk about Daniel this morning. And how that the king said, you can't pray to your God. And the decree went out and the word got to Daniel and said, Daniel, you can't be praying like you always do. Now what you aiming to do, son? Where are you going, Daniel? I'm going to pray. Just like I did before. Amen. So what happens? They take Daniel, throw him into the lion's den, and he ain't the first one that had been thrown in that lion's den before. <laughs> Smile at me, Brother Tyler. But he'd be the first one that would walk out. Come, He'd be the first one that would walk out. Come morning, amen. <laughs> he wasn't the first one that went in. Brother Jim, but glory to God. He was the first one that ever came out alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come morning, King Darius goes running. Daniel. It, did the Lord that you serve, did He save you? Did He spare you? Daniel says, well, let me tell you what Daniel said. <laughs> then said Daniel to the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent an angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. I would imagine those old lions, when they first saw the Opening, however it is they had it closed off there, they thought, hmm, lunch is coming. It's lunchtime, boys. I hope he's got some meat on his bones. I hope he ain't like some of them preachers that ain't got no meat on their bones. <laughs> mm. I hope he's big. I hope he's fat and juicy. <laughs> Soon as they throw Daniel in there. Mm. 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 Couldn't eat him. Because God sent an angel and shut them out. How many times has the devil been closing in? You may not even have known it. He was closing in for the kill. He's going to have you for supper. But glory to God, the Holy Ghost gave him lock jaw and he couldn't open his mouth to devour you. Hallelujah. Why? Because just when things looked hopeless, our God delivers again. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't go sleep on me this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Just when things looked hopeless for old Daniel. Now you know for a fact that there were some people standing back watching this and thought, we got rid of Daniel now. They may have partied that night. Hey boys, let's go on over and get us something to drink and party. What are y'all celebrating for? Got rid of Daniel. Ain't nobody ever went into that lion's den and came back out alive. Amen? Till Daniel. <laughs> I can imagine those old boys. And I'm just, this is just conjecture. I don't know that it happened. But it'd be funny if it had. I can imagine those old boys. Well, no more Daniel. But, well, who is that? Who's that walking down the street? That looks like Daniel, but there ain't no way. He went into the lion's den yesterday. And like I said before, a lot of people have been thrown in there. Ain't nobody ever walked out alive. Glory to God. Until today. And Daniel walks out alive. Why? Because just when things were hopeless, God delivered again. Probably made him swallow the gizzard. Daniel. It's Daniel. Amen. It's Daniel. We could talk about the three Hebrew children this morning. 
You knew I was going there, didn't you? Amen. The king sent out a decree. When we start playing all the music, amen. When you start hearing the music and the and the horns and the and and and, and the, the flutes and the harps and the, all the other stuff that's going on, then you're going to bow down and you're going to worship my image. So they start playing the music and the horns start blowing and everybody starts bowing except for right there on the horizon you can see three men that haven't knelt their, have not bent their knee to the image of the king. Amen, hallelujah. So what do they do? The king gets really mad and says you're going to bow or you're going to burn. And what do the Hebrew children say? They say our God will, he can, he will, but even if he don't, we will not bow our knee, hallelujah, to your image that you have set up. So they take the three Hebrew Hebrew children, they take the furnace and they fire it up seven times hotter. They throw the three Hebrew children into the fire, and you know what happens next. He looks in there to see if they're destroyed, if they're consumed of the fire, and he says, Hey, did we not throw just three men in there? Yeah, that's true. We didn't throw but three in there. How this probably ain't the first men that had been thrown into this fiery furnace. Amen. But glory to God, this would be the first men that would walk out of the fire unharmed. Amen. He said, We threw three in there, but I didn't see four. And the fourth ain't no regular man. He's like, look at me like he's the son of God. And the Bible says that they came out of that fiery furnace and not even a hair on their head was singed. You don't have to get into the fire to get your hair singed. Amen? I've singed mine on the barbecue grill just because I got a little too close to the flame. And remember when they threw the Hebrew children in there, the people that threw them in there were slain because it was so hot the fire consumed them. So no doubt, they thought, well, that takes care of the three Hebrew children. How many times did the enemy probably sit back and seen your fire, your trial, your situation and thought, well, they will never come out of this alive. But because you were not alone. <laughs> I could preach this morning. Oh, because you were not alone in the midst of the fire. You came out, hallelujah, not only did you come out, but you came out better off than you were when you went in. He said they were bound when we sent them in. Now they loose and walking around in the flames. Amen, hallelujah. God delivers again. Just when it looks hopeless, just when it looks impossible, God delivers again. I'm going to skip some of these because we don't have time to cover all of them that I have down up here. And even if we covered everything that I had down, I would be like Paul this morning. I would have to stand here and say that time fails me for us to be able to look at all of the times that God has made a way where there seemed to be no way. And you think He's going to let you down? You think He's going to let you fall? You think He's going to give up on you? Uh uh, honey. Hallelujah. He ain't never failed anybody and He ain't going to start with you. Amen. As long as your faith is in Him, as long as your hope is in Him, as long as your trust is in Him, He is still the God of impossibilities. He is still the God that makes a way where there seemeth to be no way. Amen. We can talk about Elijah and the widow woman. How that she told Elijah, I'm going to gather these two sticks. I'm going to cook this little piece of bread. Me and my son are going to eat it and we're going to die. And if you were one of the neighbors, you would have thought, yep, that's exactly what's going to happen. I've seen her covered. It's bare. I've seen, I know she don't have it. Just a little dab of oil and a little dab of meal. There ain't no way she can, she can live through this famine. She's bound to die. Except for the fact that when she put her faith in God, she was bound to live. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because she obeyed the word of God, because she put her faith in God and did what Elijah told her to do, the Bible says she ate and the prophet ate, her whole house ate, all throughout the famine. Glory to God. But yesterday, it looked hopeless. Yesterday, it seemed dire and it seemed like there was no way out. But today, they're sitting at the table eating flitter bread. And tomorrow, they'd be sitting at the table eating flitter bread. And the next day, they'd be sitting at the table eating flitter bread. For as long as the famine went on, her meal barrel did not waste, her cruise of oil did not fail. Why? Because just when things look hopeless, our God delivers again. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Got her up. Say, Brother Billy, that's all great and that's good, all them stories from the Old Testament, but you know God changed. Hmm. We could go over to Mark, the fifth chapter, around the 25th verse. 
Mark 5 and 25, hopeless situation. A certain woman that was had an issue of blood for 12 years. She'd been to all the doctors because it said she'd suffered many things of many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. No doubt when the doctor sent her out, he thought, well, I won't be seeing her again. Ain't no cure for her. Ain't no help for her. She's fixing to be dead. You can't continue to lose blood and survive. This woman had to be in a rough state. Amen? It looked hopeless. Will you give me that much this morning? It had to look hopeless. It had to look like there was no possible way. But the Bible says in 5 and 27 of the book of Mark, when she heard of Jesus, I'm trying to tell you about Jesus this morning. You may have spent all your money on the doctors. You may have spent all your money on the hospitals. They might have told you that you ain't getting no better. Matter of fact, you may be worse now. You probably are than you were when they started picking and prodding on you. Amen. But glory to God, I want you to know there's still a Jesus today. There's still healing today. There's still miracle working power today. There's still a God that when the situation looks hopeless, there is still hope to be found in Him. Say, well, Brother Billy, what if He don't heal? No. God always heals. Always. Sometimes he just decides to make the healing permanent and takes us on to glory. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Think about that this yeah. morning. <clears throat> if you're sick and you die, you get the ultimate healing. New body? I could use one old. Amen? Yeah. I'm, putting my, I'm putting in my order right now, Lord. I need him to be about 80 pounds lighter. A little bit more hair than what I got. Amen. Ain't going to be no more sickness in that body. Ain't going to be no more frailty in that body. No more, no more arthritis. No more swollen knees. No more fibromyalgia. I can't even Amen. say that. Amen. No more hurting. No more pain. The ultimate healing is to step out of this body and to step over into the presence of a living God where sickness cannot stay, where pain cannot stay, where sorrow does not dwell. So God always heals. Now, He don't always heal you in this life. And I don't understand that. And if you understand that, please let me know how smart you got because I don't think anybody understands. I know that people say, well, they didn't get healed because they didn't have enough faith. That's bull. I have stood by the side of people that had more faith than I had. And they knew that God was more than able to heal them. It was just time for God to take them home. And if God always healed, then we wouldn't have to take the scripture out of the Bible that says it is appointed that a man wants to die. Because you don't die being too healthy. Amen. So he does heal in this life, thank God. Great miracles he's performed, like this woman. At the end of her rope, she heard about Jesus. And the Bible says she came, when she heard about Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. So God is still a healer and he still heals. Sometimes he does it on this side of the river. And sometimes He does it by taking us on home and giving us a new glorified body. Amen. Hallelujah. Where we'll have no more sickness and no more pain. You know that I can be sick in this life and God can heal me and then later on in life I get sick again. But once I take on that new body, once I cross over the river and step into the presence of God, there'll be no more getting sick again. Amen. I'm, getting, I'm trying to close. We can talk about Lazarus. Dead four days. There ain't no way. Lord, if you'd have been here, you might could have helped him. If you hadn't have tarried and waited so long, if you'd have got here while he was still alive, maybe you could have helped him. The situation looked completely impossible. They done had to potluck. Amen? They already had the funeral. They already got together and ate. They all dispersed and went their way. And here comes Jesus. Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. <laughs> uh, Jesus said, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I am the resurrection and the life. 
Where'd you bury him? Lord, you don't understand. He's been dead for four days. He stinks. Where'd you bury him? Lord, you don't understand. It's impossible. There ain't no sense in it. You're wasting your time. Where did you bury him? So he walks in front of this impossible situation. It don't get more impossible than death. Amen. Amen. Well, I didn't hear this morning. I said, it don't get any more impossible than death. And he stands there and he tells them to roll back the stone. <laughs> and just when things look hopeless, our God delivers again. Hallelujah. He said, Lazarus, come forth. What is that? There's movement in the tomb. <laughs> oh, and the Bible says that he that was dead, listen, came forth bound hand and foot, this is in John the 11th chapter, with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin, and Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. I imagine there's been times in your life, if not those of us that hear those, someone out there on the side of my voice that the devil thought he had you locked and sealed up tight in a tomb. You were dead. Spiritually, maybe you were dead physically. There's been people dead physically that God brought back. And he's walked away thinking it's a done deal. But Jesus came. Called you up out of that place of death. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. So maybe you're facing a situation that seems hopeless. I hope that something I've said this morning gives you some hope that no matter how bad it looks, there's always hope in God. Maybe you've been praying for somebody and they seem hopeless. The more you pray for them, it seems like the worse they get. Amen? Whenever you think somebody's beyond saving, I want you to remember Saul of Tarsus. The devil had him. He thought completely and totally and there was no way of him changing ever. <laughs> he heads out to Damascus with papers in his pocket. I'm going to go get me some more Christians. And God gets in his way, knocks him off his horse, and says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he saved someone who seemed unsavable. Have you ever met somebody that seemed unsavable? Mm -hmm. Don't believe it, church. God is more than able. Nobody is impossible. No situation is impossible. Nobody is without hope. No situation is without hope. I'm closing, I promise. We look at these examples and countless others and we can gain faith in knowing as the Scripture that we started off with this morning Remember the former things of old. We can gain faith in remembering the times that God, and reading about the times that God delivered and made a way where there was no way. And remembering the times in our life that God, I could ask you this morning, how many times has God made a way for you and you didn't know how it was going to happen, but He did it anyway. And every one of us in here would raise our hand. Amen. God hasn't changed. He's still on the throne. Amen. God hasn't changed. Man has changed. The church changed. Changes. Denominations change their bylaws. God don't change His Word. And God does not change. As a matter of fact, the Bible says He is the same yesterday. Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The words of Jesus in Luke 1 and 37 when He said, For with God nothing shall be Impossible, and in Luke eighteen and twenty seven, when he said these things, seem are they are impossible with man, but they are possible with God. Those are still his words this morning. And even in our greatest times of sickness, even in our greatest times of darkness, even in our greatest times of trial, there is still hope to be found in Him. Amen. And just when things look hopeless, when your back is against the wall, when the enemy's closing in for the kill, stand still and see the salvation of your Lord and your God and trust in His promises and trust in His Word and have faith in Him knowing that nothing is impossible with Him. That all things are possible with Him. Amen. No matter what you're going through today, and I've got more, and you could ex you, we could exhaust all the time that we have and still not scratch the surface of the things that God has done and the fact that He has not changed. 
Is it in the Gospel of John that says that the books would not con the world would not contain the books? Yeah, to the last chapter. To contain all the things that Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Amen. I cannot expound to you enough this morning the stories. We don't have the time to look at all of those stories in the Word of God. Read the book of in the book of Hebrews, the eleventh chapter, when it talks about all of those that were delivered and set free and raised to, from the dead and spared from the mouth of lions and the list goes on and on. And even if, listen, the devil can't win either way. Even if, if whatever it is you're facing in this life kills you, if you know the Lord, what has the enemy accomplished? <laughs> Nothing. Sent you on home. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Sent you on home. Sounds to me like we're a winner either way. Right. Sounds to me like that regardless of the situation, there's always hope in God and that nothing is impossible with Him. Hallelujah. Sounds to me like somebody snoring. Anybody else this morning got something before we go? Hallelujah.